Well, Corey Lee, good to see you and, and good to catch up with you here this, this spring training. And this is your first big league camp, uh, but you were uh, in the one of some one of the minor leaguers who was up last year before minor league camp started with the big league club in spring training, catching bullpens and, and getting a chance to know the guys. Has that helped you with your acclimation this year to, to fully being in the big league camp now? Absolutely. I mean, uh, coming into the first spring training, we actually had I was here for about five days, so I didn't get to really meet a lot of the older guys that have been in the organization for a while. So going to Corpus and meeting a bunch of the, the older guys, a couple draft classes above me, really helped me learn the development of what the Astros kind of are, are pushing us and pushing us to do. So picking their brains and really learning from them helped me extraordinary amounts. And um, I'm really, really fortunate to have that opportunity to go out there. Um, I want to go back to your draft day a little bit, just because not only do we have a Cal connection, but this one's going to be really interesting for you to hear. Um, my wife, who doesn't follow baseball pretty much anymore and has never, I don't think, followed a, a Major League Baseball draft, you are by far the only one that she knows that was ever drafted in Major League Baseball in the history wow. of the game. Wow. And the, re the reason is, is because her, na her first name is Corey. Okay. With a K. And then her middle name is Lee. So she's there. Corey Lee Blum. So you, she already has your jersey, and I think she's ready for you to get to the big leagues. But, uh, you know, go back and tell us a little bit about your uh, draft day and what that experience was like when you found out you got drafted by the Astros. It was unbelievable, man. It was um, never really something that I thought was going to come true. Um, I've always worked for it, obviously. Um, so kind of I was like blinded by it um, the entire year I was just had my head down and I kept on playing my game um, never really thought about the draft at all and then obviously there, there's the scouts there playing behind Andrew Vaughn um, there's a bunch of people waiting to watch him so I got the opportunity to to show what I can do and took it for what it was and um, it was an incredible year um, from there on out I think my life is completely just flipped and um, extremely thankful for the opportunities that that cow gave me, because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be in my situation now today. Um, so I keep on, I keep on looking back and it just, it seems like it's like a dream coming true. I keep on repeating it and it's, it's, it's true. So it's, it's pretty fun. Yeah, and I think what a lot of fans don't understand about you is, is like you said, they, you know, you were hitting behind Andrew Vaughn, who's now with the White Sox, their number one pick. And there was a real transition from your sophomore year to your junior year. So the work ethic is already there. But what adjustments did you make in that junior season at Cal that vaulted you into this uh, prospect status and, uh, you know, for the Astros? Yeah, it was just the opportunity for me to play. Uh, my freshman and sophomore year, I was behind Ty Green. He was a catcher that we had at Cal. Um, I got the opportunity to kind of hit in the lineup, play a little bit of third base. But the my junior year, I really got the opportunity to really catch and learn the type of player that I am behind the plate. Also, transitioning that to my ABs. So getting consistent ABs, getting to, to play behind him every day, really, really helped my development. You know, talking about getting a chance to finally play every day your junior year at Cal, and, and catching on a regular basis. I know in college, it's a little different in terms of, you know, a lot of times the, the coach calls the games and, and, and all that. What was that situation like for you? And what has the process been like for you just kind of learning how to call a game? I don't know how much you did in college, but, but you know, certainly at the pro level as well. Absolutely. At college, uh, we had our head coach, Mike New. He was a pitching coach. And uh, picking his brain in college really helped me learn how to learn the game at a pro level. So if that's, if that's calling the game, if that's managing your, your pitching staff, if that's kind of being the, the coordinator behind the plate for the, for the infield. Um, I got the experience that at Cal and they kind of gave me full range of, of calling my games. And obviously some in summer ball leagues um, in college, I got to call my own game. So going into pro ball, I had that base. And then now that I'm in here, I'm just learning what the, these pitchers are incredible. They know exactly what they're doing. So I don't really have to teach them as much as just kind of guiding them through of what they got to do. So just learning the game and picking the, uh, the older guys' brains apart is, uh, is kind of my way of going right now. 
Yeah, and I think being in big league camp, especially for catchers, is a great thing. And now this being the second big league camp that you've been able to be a part of, everything we hear about Brent Strom is how great he is at working with pitchers and developing them and creating new avenues for them to become better at the big leagues. Have you had much interaction with Brent Strom and how much uh, has he helped you behind the plate working with some of his pitchers? I have. He's, he's in the bullpen every single day that I'm catching lives and I'm catching in the bullpen and watching them do their work is, is incredible. Watching him talk to the pitchers, making the, the, the communication between the, the pitchers and him is extreme clear. They know exactly what their plan is for each in the individual. Um, there's thousands of pitchers in this, in this world of baseball. And um, I'm pretty sure that he can connect with each and every single one of them. So. Now you mentioned Andrew Vaughn, your teammate at Cal, who you, you hit behind last year and wound up being the, the third overall pick in the draft by the, by the White Sox. And you were also picked in the first round, 32nd overall uh, by the Astros in, in the 2019 draft. Uh, I mean, obviously, like you said, there were a lot of scouts at Cal games to see Andrew Vaughn. At what point did you realize, hey, some of these guys are, are watching me too? Honestly, if I'm being if I'm being completely honest, I had my head down the entire season. Um, obviously, like we keep on repeating ourselves, Vaughn had that name. Vaughn had that prospect um, kind of headline, and I was I was always under the radar. So I love being that guy. I'm not the guy to kind of run out and say, "Oh, this is who I am." I'm just kind of there to play, and um, that's kind of my game. So sticking to my game and doing that all year got me into the the position that I am today. All right. I've got to ask, you know, my brother was a catcher and I've met some, you know, tough guys behind the plate. Brad Osmus mm -hmm. was another guy who was kind of smaller in uh, stature, but played behind home plate. Why did you want to become a catcher? Everybody's throwing 95 to hundred miles an hour with turbo sliders. Why would you want to get behind the plate? Keeps you in the game. Uh, every single, every single pitch um, you are in the game. Um, I've tried playing different positions. I've tried sitting at third and I've tried being in the outfield, but I cannot be locked into the game like I am behind the plate ever. And um, it's, a, it's a special position. I take, I love it. I love catching. Um, whenever I talk about catching, I, I fall in love with it even more just because there's this non, never ending process of catching because some things are going to change there's different pitchers out there that like different setups different type of communication too so um it's it's a position that i love and i'm always going to love my older brother was a catcher so that's cool now catching has taken on a whole different art form these days too with the ability mm -hmm. to frame uh give the fans an idea of what that means you know what does framing exactly mean for a guy who is actually behind the home plate trying to get pitches for his pitcher you gotta make it pretty my my biggest thing <laughs> is is making it pretty to the eye because the guy that's right behind me is calling the balls and strikes and if he looks at a ball that that you're presenting pretty well and that looks clean and it looks smooth i think that is that is the number one priority as a catcher it's in your job description to catch the ball. So that's number one. Um, to, and then the second part of it is just making everything look pretty and making it easier for the pitcher and uh, really, really trusting us behind the plate. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it, making it pretty. And I, I love what you said, too, about number one is you got to catch the ball. And I think about <laughs> Johnny, that's, some, that's something Johnny Bench talks about a lot. Uh, obviously, framing wasn't as big when he played. But it, kind of talk about the balance between there's so much emphasis on framing now that I think you see some catchers who they focus on framing more than actually catching the ball and you <laughs> see guys on one knee and, and, and stuff like that more. How do you try to strike that balance between, Hey, making sure that you you're in a position where you can present the ball well, but you're also in a position to make sure that, you know, the ball doesn't, doesn't get away from you. doesn't go to the back. So do it. Practicing in the bullpen has been my main priority because that's, that's the only game live reps that a catcher can really get. You can go in a, in a batting cage setting and you can have the machine kind of firing fastballs at you, but it's not going to be anything compared to a live pitcher on the mound throwing 96 with some sink or a bang or curveball that's going to dirt that you got to block it. And it's that reaction time. So the way that I go about catching is making the bullpens as live as I can, making the live ABs as game-like as I can, because 
you can't really get those reps back and you can't really practice those reps unless you are fully bought into the, the game mode. Yeah, we talked earlier about your uh, relationship with Brent Strom. And I think what's interesting, and many people may not know this, is, is that your manager now, Dusty Baker, has a son that you played with at the University of California, yes. uh, Darren Baker, who is still at Cal. Uh, I first, I want to know about the relationship between you and Darren. And then mm -hmm. has that given you a leg up on everybody else because you know Dusty a little bit better from seeing him in the stands at Cal? So Darren and I, we got really, really close his freshman year coming in. Um, I was a sophomore and he was a freshman. So I got to really, I guess, not take him under my wing, but really learn from him because I, I say to this day, whenever someone asks me about him, he is the most baseball savvy second baseman that I've played with in my life because he has been around the big leagues. He's been around his dad his entire life. He's seen players go through things that I probably will never even see. And he saw it at such a young age, which improved his development on just out of, out of the charts. So that relationship helped me in college. And then obviously junior year, Dusty tried to come to all the games. So I got to talk to him, grow a relationship with him before I even knew that he was going to have an impact on my life. Like he is right now um, as my manager. So um I wouldn't say that it's putting a, a step ahead of it, but I do feel comfortable talking to him. I do feel comfortable working about the swing. I do feel comfortable talking to him about my family, about his family. We have a really, really strong connection and relationship that is really, really special. And um, I'm really, really fortunate to have him in my life and um, especially the way that he is right now. Oh, that's really neat. And, you know, talking about family, tell, tell us a little bit about your family. You mentioned you had a brother who was a catcher. Mm -hmm. uh, what was what was the baseball exposure like for you in your family? And, and uh, you know, as Blummer, piggybacking on something Blummer asked you earlier, when did you decide that you, you know, hey, behind the plate, this is where I need to be? Yeah, my older brother, so he's 10 years older than me. He's the one that really introduced me to baseball. Um, he was a catcher at UC San Diego. Um, he was an extremely good catcher and I feel like if he was in today's game of baseball, he would be one of the best. Um, but at that time they weren't really looking at the, the D2 type of players and watching him, um, probably when I was around like 10 and he was, he was 21 in college and I got to be the bat boy for, for their team. So I got to be in the dugout. I got to see what he would do. I got to see how kind of college baseball was forming at a really, really young age, which made my player development go up also. So probably when I was around 10, I, I fell in love with it, just watching my brother and I fell in love with it watching the game because when you're watching TV and you're watching an MLB game, you're watching the catcher the entire game because he's, he's the one that's controlling it. So I, I love that. I love being in control of the game. I love kind of being the quarterback, I guess. Um, but it's, it's a position that I, I just love. So, so when you're watching big league games nowadays, and I know it's, it's transitioned a little bit. So even if you had a favorite catcher back in the day, it might be a little bit different than the, how you guys are playing the game now. I think it's evolved yeah. quite a bit. But when you're sitting down watching, a, you know, watching TV and baseball is on and there's a certain catcher catching a game, which catcher would you stop and watch play the game? I watch Romuto. I watch Romuto all the time. Um, the new style of catching on the one knee and the, the, the being able to throw, I take that into consideration. I kind of compare, draw comparisons to the type of player that I am to the type of players that I'm watching. Um, so Romuto, he has a really, really good arm, really, really defensive catcher, real athletic behind there, also has the bat. Um, also McCann, I watch him always. He's a bigger body. I kind of compare to what I can do and what other guys can do because catching is a, uh, it's all about being comfortable and kind of being able to move and being able to do certain things. And one catcher might, might not be able to do one thing than the other. Um, so really just narrowing down to the, to the guys that I can kind of relate to. What about growing up or were there players that you, you really looked up to that you idolize? I know you're from the San Diego area. Were you, were you a big Padres fan cheering, cheering, cheering on Blummer? 
I was, <laughs> but you know what? I'm, I'm going to be honest. It was tough to be a Padres fan when I was a kid. Uh, <laughs> it, we, we didn't win too many games, but uh, it was a Petco Park is an incredible feeling whenever you get in there. I'm, I'm always saying the day that I get to step in that field, it's going to be a dream come true. It's going to be unbelievable. It's going to be an experience that I'm never going to forget about. But um, Padres have always, always got a, a spot in my heart. Trust me. All right. So you're a Southern California kid like I was. I grew up in L.A. You growing up in San Diego. We both chose to go to a school in Northern California. Who's it's And we can be honest, it's not notorious for being a baseball factory, even though there have been some seriously quality players come out of the University of California. But when you're getting recruited out of high school, what made you choose to go to a place like Cal, where you know not only are you going to have to uh, play in the Pac-12, which is a tough conference, but you're also going to have to go to school, man. I knew it was going to be a challenge. Um, I'm not the guy to take an easy route. Um, I'm the guy to, to really work for to what I'm going to get. Um, so I knew going into it, it was going to be hard. And I knew the, the players and the coaches that were there for me was the best decision that I can make. Um, obviously, you can't turn down the academics at Cal. I really I keep on saying that it's a, it's a hidden gem over there. It's, it's crazy because, like you said, no one – really knows about Cal baseball and no one really knows about Cal basketball or Cal football, but it's the student athletes there are different. We're all different because we have to go through it. Um, I, whenever I try to talk about college, it's, I bring up Berkeley and I say that it's a, it's a one of a kind place. Um, don't really know if you go there to visit, but to go there for college, um, it's a it's a really really good spot to go there for um, player development and also on the academic sides. You know, talking about uh, player development, obviously this past year really difficult in that regard with the pandemic. Uh, no minor league season. You haven't played a full minor league season yet since you were drafted in, in 2019. You just got that time in, in the New York Penn League, and, and that's it so far. What were you doing? And I know you were. I believe you were at the Astros alternate site in September. But what were you doing before that? Uh, I mean, it was a while before they officially canceled the minor league season. I think a lot of guys kind of knew it was going to happen. But what, what were you doing to try and, and just get some reps and, 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 and work on your game? I had a, a group of two or three guys that I've known since high school that I've uh, really grown up with on the baseball end of things and also in life. Um, so every day I had a couple guys. I had a a roommate that lived with me at my house. Um, we built a cage in my backyard. We had a park in our, through the creek. We'd walk through the creek. We'd go play at the park. We'd go run around every day trying to stay busy. I felt like I was like a little kid again, honestly, because every day I'd wake up and then I'd be like, okay, like I'm going to go to the park. I'm going to go throw. And I was just trying to stay busy, honestly, and trying to make my own season, I guess you can say, just because we didn't have it. And that's the way that I develop better i believe did you yeah yeah no no that's good i my question yeah. was you said you went through yeah. the creek were you uh please tell me there was a bridge over that creek oh yeah yeah no, it, it was, it was Put on good. some hip waders and go <laughs> yep so we, we would go over there, got some, play catch, yeah. and then um we we built a home gym so um especially in california everything was shut down so we didn't really have a lot of things to to go do so making the most of what we had. And um, I'm really fortunate to have the guys that were there with me um, because it also helped me teaching them and they taught me. And it was a really, really open conversation about um, developing at that time. So having them on my side and kind of having all the resources in the tip of my hands and just kind of figuring out what I had to do each day to get better. Yeah, we are talking with Corey Lee, catching prospect for the Houston Astros. And we've heard a lot about the catching aspect, the mentality of being behind the plate, working with pitchers. But let the fans know what kind of hitter uh, Corey Lee is, man. Love to hit. Um, it's part of the game. That's what I sign up for. Um, I kind of I'm a, I'm a person to believe that catching is one thing and hitting is a completely different other thing. Because if you if you bring in catching the hitting, you're not going to be as well as as you can be if you're just focused on hitting, if you're not going to be as good as a catcher if you're focused on hitting. Um, so narrowing down uh, just to where you are in that moment and hitting is, is my biggest thing that I kind of keep on reminding myself right now, um, just because you can get caught up with um, 
everything behind the plate and kind of bring it in your hitting and that's not going to help you. So I love to hit. Um, I love to swing every day. I love working on my swing. I love progressing with the swing. The Astros have taught me more than I've ever known in my life. Um, I never really had that hitting coach. So having them kind of right by my side and I know that they're going to fight for me and I know they're going to do what's right for me um, makes me feel really, really good about myself. All right, Corey Lee, we're really excited to, that you're able to join us. Looking forward to seeing how, how your career develops and uh, can't wait to see you in an Astros uniform at Minute Maid Park here, hopefully in the, in the near future. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you guys Absolutely. for having me. Absolutely. Pleased to be joined by Alex Santos on this edition of Astroline presented by Carbock Brewing Company. And uh, you're the uh, second round pick of the Astros last year. And I know it had to be exciting for you to get drafted. And, uh, you know, normally you're thinking, all right, go get signed, go out, play a, a minor league season, or at least part of a minor league season. You haven't even gotten a chance to play in a game yet. So uh, take us back to the day you were drafted. Uh, and what that experience was like for you and, and whether you were aware that, that you might get drafted where you were. Yeah, I mean, it was it was awesome. It was a really uh, great experience. Um, I got to spend it with my family uh, in my uncle's backyard. So I had a couple of like, family members, friends there. Um, and it was just awesome, you know, like hearing my name getting called on the TV. Like, you know, it's always been a dream of mine to get drafted. And, you know, when I was younger, looking up to like, you know, the, seeing all the players like, MLB players playing and stuff like that and you always think like damn like you know I want to do that one day and like you know just hearing my name being called and like you know getting the chance to play professional baseball you know I was just it was mind-blowing it was just kind of you know an experience I'll never forget. And what a unique experience it was and you know it's unique in the sense that I'm not sure if many people know this but Alex you are from the Bronx in New York. You grew up a Yankee fan. You talked about, I read a couple of Yankee blogs actually, and read about your name in the Yankee blogs. And you would work out and you'd go running near the stadium and things like that. And yet you get drafted by the Astros. Yes, it's exciting getting drafted to uh, to chase a dream. But what, what was the feeling when you found out that the Astros were the team that actually drafted you? To be honest, I would just, like, my first thought was just like, you know, there's such a great, like, uh, pitching like program like they produce a lot of great pitchers and that was like the first thing that came to my mind and I was just like you know I it's like such a coincidence that it was the Yankees Astros like <laughs> situation but like I feel like you know I got put in a great situation you know getting drafted by the Astros and you know being a pitcher and you know getting to learn like new things and you know develop better. Yeah, uh, you know mentioned growing up in the Bronx which of course is where I'm from as well and you grew up a, a Yankees fan uh, what was uh, your exposure like to the Yankees and to baseball growing up? Did you get to go to many games at, at Yankee Stadium? I, you know, I know I've read that you and your dad used to work out at the park that's across the street from current Yankee Stadium, which is actually where old Yankee Stadium was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which was, is awesome, by the way. That is an incredible setup. It yep. really is. So what was, what was kind of your exposure to, to baseball and, and to, to going to games at, at Yankee games when you were a kid? Yeah, so I had, you know, my my family is just a big baseball family. So, you know, I lived maybe five minutes from Yankee Stadium. So me and my dad would, like, get, uh, you know, get tickets and we'll walk there. You know, I'll be at Yankee games, like, all the time. And, like, growing up, like, you know, you practice in different parks. You know, me and my dad would just get up early, um, you know, walk to the – walk or take the train, sometimes take the car or whatever to, uh, to that field where old Yankee Stadium was and – uh. You know, I would get my work in there um, and, you know, just did, did my thing over there. Yeah, my first thought in knowing that you live five minutes from the stadium is that if, when you do get called up and the Astros do go to Yankee Stadium, you will probably opt to stay at home. <laughs> Instead of having to get on that get on that bus and come from Manhattan, which is like feels like a forty five minute drive sometimes, um, but there there's a strong connection between New York and Houston, most notably with uh, Andy Pettit and Roger Clemens. Have you had a chance to meet either of those guys? Yeah, that's a I, I met actually uh, Andy Pettit. Uh, my I think it was twenty nineteen summer. Uh, I did uh, the PDP league, okay. um, and he was one of the uh, pitching coaches there. Um, and, you know, I got some info off of him. You know, he gave me some tips on, like, 
you know, he saw me pitch in the bullpens and stuff. Um, and it was pretty cool. And I actually met Derek Jeter as well, too. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's really neat. Where did you get – you met Jeter through that same league? Yeah, same thing, yeah. Wow. It was so, like a, it was like a, it's like the top 80 prospects, uh, you know, they came together for like a whole month and we were like, I, we were at um, IMG Academy and we just stood there and did work. And that was like the, it was like diff, three different trials. It was that, then it was like high school all-star game. And then the USA tryouts it was like, all oh, that was combined. Well, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, so I know you've talked a lot and I've read a lot. Uh, about you and your dad and you're Alex Santos the second so your dad yeah. also Alex uh what was his what how far did he get playing the game I'm assuming he played baseball as well how far did, did he get playing the game and and what's kind of his you know his knowledge base and how much has he been able to teach you about about the game yeah so he played uh he played a bunch in Puerto Rico and then when he came to uh when he came to the U.S. he uh played all the way up to high school um but then had like uh he had like a little injury I think he like broke his ankle or something like that and uh you know he kind of like stopped but you know he got a lot of experience from you know my his uncle which was he played like a like pro leagues in in Puerto Rico so he got to learn from there and then just over the years like you know he taught me like all the basics like everything that I learned from like as a little kid that was like all my dad and then over the years like just you know, we went to different, you know, going to different trainers, trying to find the right one. Um, you know, he learned a bunch and, you know, implemented it all. Like, you know, when he would see the mistakes and do this and that. And then, uh, you know, I got up to like, I think it was my seventh or eighth grade year. Um, I met my coach now that I've had for, you know, all the way up to now. His name is Melvin Perez. Um, and then from there, you know, you know, my dad still teaches me and, you know, sees stuff like you know if he sees mistakes and stuff he'll show me but uh you know I go to like my my guy Melvin now he uh you know teaches me everything like my pitching coach my mentor like it's a mix of like him and my dad like that's the dynamic duo it's good to have those coaches to lean on especially it's great to have that parent too that's always watching those games I know they watch them in a different way um, Alex, give fans who are listening to this, give them a little bit of a scouting report on the stuff that you have. There's plenty of video out there because you talked about some of the leagues and camps that you've been to, but tell the fans at home what your repertoire is and give yourself a little bit of a scouting report. Um, well, so I have, I have five pitches. I have a fastball, two seam, a change up, curveball, slider. Um, you know, I've gotten my fastball up to like 97 uh, actually in instructs, I was the first time I ever got up to like, I think actually, no, it was like 96. Um, but I've hit 97 once in a bullpen. Just got to throw it out there. <laughs> but, uh, like yeah. Hey, you got to top um, out, right? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm a real, like, I, I, I feel like I'm a starter. Like, you know, I, I like to, uh, I'm a big competitive guy. So I like to compete with my fastball. Um, you know, show people like, you know, what my fastball can do. And like, you know, over the course of the game, if they start, you know, realize, you know, seeing it or whatever, then I start mixing in like my curveball slider. Um, and even now, like now, since I've gotten to Houston, um, I've learned so much. Like, it's crazy, like using all the cameras and different, you know, coaches like helping me. And, you know, I've gotten to change my curveball grip um, and my slider grip and tweak my fastball a little bit and now like you know over like rap soto and track man and stuff like you can see like the big you know the, the difference between the way i was throwing it in high school and the way i'm throwing it now um and it's pretty incredible so your first exposure really at least in person to to the astros and and some of their coaching was you were an instructional league as you mentioned uh which they you know there yeah. was a few weeks of instructional league uh, in the fall. Uh, I mean, that had to be, had to have been a great experience for you because obviously you didn't get ch a chance to play in the minor leagues yet. Uh, and that was actually, I mean, you were facing other Astros guys and I believe you guys played some games against some, some other teams as well, but it had to feel good just to, to face batters again. Right. Yeah, it was pretty sick. It was just, uh, we got to, um, you know, we got there, you know, we did our throwing programs and everything and, 
we started throwing our bullpens and then progressively, I think like by the third week, third, I think it was third week, we were throwing live VPs. We didn't face anybody else. We okay. kind of kept it together. So we faced each other like uh, inner squads. Um, and that was pretty cool because, you know, I didn't throw, I haven't, like I didn't really throw up to a batter and I don't know, since like that summer, I think it was, it was crazy. I mean, it's pretty cool. Oh, so, and you're in big league camp right now. I want to know what the vibe right now is like in camp. Cause I, you know, I'm not privy, you know, like uh, Robert Ford's down there. You're obviously way into it because you're on that roster. That's able to go out there and work out, uh, give fans at home an idea of the vibe of Astros uh, spring training right now. Dude, it's just such a, I don't know, man. I think, you know, since me being like 19 years old, it's kind of like just an insane feeling like, you know, being there, like, you know, surrounded by like McCullers, Granky, like, you know, everybody on the like pitching uh, roster. Um, and it's just like, everybody's just so helpful. You know, everybody wants to see each other win. So, you know, any, any questions you have, you can go up to Lance and ask him. like, you know, he'll always give you an answer, like try to help you out, try to figure it out. And it's just like a, you know, it's just a nice chill, like a really like relaxed kind of like cool vibe like everybody you know everybody's there to like see you win so it's pretty cool is there anyone in particular I mean you mentioned McCullers but is there anyone in particular that has really like kind of like taken you under their wing or that you you find yourself talking to more than others uh yeah Lance actually um you know I've asked him a bunch of questions um you know he's given like me a lot of like you know answers to my questions like you know trying to figure out certain things and you know, he's kind of like taking me under his wing, like, and like, you know, keeping me on track and stuff. What What do you anticipate your 2021 season uh, looking like? Yeah, I know that you're in big league camp, so you're going to get a lot of eyes on you. But uh, like you said, you're you're very young at 19 years old. This will be your first minor league season. Uh, what do you envision? Uh, how would you like to see your 2021 season go? Uh, you know, I would like to, you know see me having a minor league season and, you know, going in there and, you know, just showing everybody what I got, man, you know, finally pitching in a game against others, like other teams, like that's going to be like pretty cool. Um, but yeah, you know, I just want to go in there and do my thing and have a great 2021 season. So, I mean, you're a fellow Bronx guy. I got to ask you some stuff about the Bronx. I mean, this is where I step out and just listen right now. <laughs> I'll take, you, you can take, I'll take notes. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, you grew up in the Bronx. We were talking before we, we came on. We, you grew up not too far from, from where I grew up. Uh, what do you, uh, you know, I mean, obviously it's where you've, you've lived your whole life. What do you think you're going to miss most about being in the Bronx full time now that you're spending more time away from home what do you love most about about where you grew up um what do I love most I would say just like the the uh I don't know like the, the vibe that you get there like you have to kind of like you kind of have to just grind your way like every day like it's kind of like just a fast-paced city so you know there's no slacking there's always like you know, there's, all, there's always, like, you know, the Bronx has a bunch of, like, great kids, like, players, baseball players and stuff. And I feel like just the vibe there is just everybody wants to eat. So you got to be that early bird that gets up and goes and, you know, does his thing before everybody else. So I'm going to kind of miss that kind of, like, you know, vibe that, like, you know, get up. Because I used to wake up, like, 5.30 every morning to go practice and stuff. I'm kind of going to miss that. And, you know, friends and family, but they're always uh, accessible to come down and come see me and stuff. So it's going to be sick. What are you uh, most looking forward to? Uh, you know, I mean, obviously we talk about like actually competing because you didn't have a high school season either last year, which a lot of people may not realize in the Bronx, in addition to not being able to pitch after you got drafted by the Astros, what are you most looking forward to besides the actual competition to to starting your career and getting a chance to go to some of these, these minor league cities that I'm sure you you've never been to before. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm like looking forward to like, you know, meeting like all these like new people and like, you know, making new friends and kind of just like, you know, 
vibing out with different people and like you know living the grind with like new people making new friends and kind of just like you know living on the road I guess <laughs> well it's only really going to be a different experience Alex Santos we're really happy you're in the Astros organization looking forward to seeing you get into some games and uh so so glad so glad you're able to join us today thank you guys I appreciate it